Microsoft and cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike suffering a major outage overnight. If you're just waking up, you might be seeing it on your own screen uh, with what's called the blue screen of death. Uh, hopefully, it's getting updated as we speak, but it's leaving many businesses unable to access their computer systems, including, by the way, some of ours here at NBC. I uh, want to get uh, some reaction right now uh, from Rohit Chopra. Uh, he's the uh, director of Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. We've got a couple other things to talk about as well. This is obviously not on our, um, on our bingo card, Rohit. But um, what, what is your initial reaction to this as somebody who, who thinks about these issues and the financial system in particular? Well, Andrew, as of right now, we do not have any reports yet from the banks and others we regulate that there is a major outage in terms of a critical payment system or a very large bank. That being said, I think we are just getting a taste of some of the potential effects of a real reliance by the financial sector and sectors across the economy on really a handful of cloud companies and other key systems. In the past few months, obviously, we saw some effects of cyber attacks, ransomware attacks, in the healthcare arena, in auto dealers, others. This is the type of situation that can really create issues across the economy. I'm pretty hopeful that what we will see today is inconvenience more than chaos. But of course, um, we're just getting a taste of it. So, you know, Andrew, two days ago, um, the Treasury, myself, others, we announced some actions related to resilience of the financial system and dependence on the cloud. There are just a handful of big cloud companies where so much of the economy is now resting on. And right. so we're going to really need to take a hard look at this. But my priority today is making sure that consumers can access money in their bank accounts, that payments can occur. And so we're going to be watching it minute by minute and have been working on it right. all morning. Just speak to that larger issue, though, because I think a lot of people do wake up on a morning like this and say to themselves, do we need more competition? Do we need different players, more players? At the same time, you say to yourself, all these systems need to be so tightly integrated to work properly. Um, and in many ways, you'd almost want them to be singular as well, right? It's, it's sometimes these little bottlenecks from third-party players that, that link in, like CrowdStrike. And so how do you think about that? Yeah, I think sometimes what we fail to appreciate is that certain parts of the tech stack are as critical to our infrastructure of our economy than the energy grid and transportation. So we have to start confronting some of these really tough problems. And I do think that the creep of concentration does play a role in undermining our resilience. It is obviously important to have interoperability for systems to be able to talk to each other. But if you just look at how one company that may sometimes be unknown to the public can really have a domino effect. So I think as we look at concentration across the economy, especially in technology and other sectors, um, we're just going to need to protect the broader public and businesses across sectors from some of these types of disasters right. that can occur. Rahit, meantime, while, while we have you here, uh, and it was really our intention to talk about it, uh, you have put together a proposal around uh, paycheck advance fees, which I know you uh, believe are are, are way out of line, I think, with what they should be. Uh, what are you doing in this, in, in this regard? And, and maybe you can explain it to the, to, to the audience. Well, you know, during the pandemic, we saw a big uptick in companies working with employers to help um, their employees get paid more quickly. So instead of paying them more frequently, they would work with a fintech or other company and so what we are, we took a hard look at this entire industry and our analysis showed that some of these arrangements lead to very, very high cost lending exceeding 100 percent APR. A lot of those workers end up getting into a series of loans where they pay lots of money in fees. So I think we wanted to make sure that the employees and the workers are able to really clearly compare their options with credit cards and other types of loans, and that we don't have a race to the bottom. But at the, really, I, I want to make sure that big employers don't have a big financial incentive to continue to delay payment to their employees 
if they're also getting in the business of lending to their workers. Right. Reid, I have a broader question, uh, which is just how you think about your role and the timing of your role right now uh, as it relates to this election, uh, given where the polls are and, and, and the way it appears to be prend, uh, trending uh, towards uh, former President Trump. Are there things you want to try to do uh, while you're in this place today? Does it change the dynamic with which you and your colleagues think about what they're doing? You know, not really. In the case of the regulators, we have such big items in front of us in terms of how the economy is really working. We've seen some big changes through the course of the pandemic. And really, as the changes in monetary policy have filtered through the mortgage market, the credit card market. So we're pretty laser focused on that. But of course, we do. Uh, we are in Washington. And um, we keep an eye on everything, but we're really fixated on how to make sure that consumers in the economy are able to navigate um, the current right. situations they face. And in many cases, um, they're facing some pretty high rates on their credit cards and mortgages. And we're thinking about how to make sure um, we can solve problems in their lives. Uh, you may not be able to answer this, but I'll just ask it anyway. Uh, former President Trump, I don't think, was a fan, as you know, of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. However, it appears that J.D. Vance, who may be his uh, running mate or will be his running mate in this, um, seems to be uh, more of a uh, fan. W what do you make of that dynamic? Well, I always think that the work that agencies like the CFPB do um, maybe in Washington they food fight, but in America people realize that there needs to be some sort of watchdog to really look after and protect not just households, but also the businesses that are playing fairly. I think we've recovered tens of billions of dollars from fraudsters, bad actors, and honestly, that sometimes feels like a Washington debate rather than one that is a real issue. So I know that the markets have benefited a lot from the work of the CFPB, the mortgage market especially. So we just chug along, Andrew.